So hey guys, today is day one of learning Anytel from scratch. So today we'll understand the interface of Anytel. We'll understand how to use the tools. We'll also make a very simple automation, which may be your first automation. So let's get into it. So the moment you log into Anytel, this is how it'll look. I mean, you won't have all these files, but you could make them. You could make a folder by clicking here. You could create a workflow by clicking here. Now we can rename it by going here and typing whatever you want. This is your canvas and uh, you'd be making workflows here. Here you can see these four things. This is credentials. Credentials is all those external apps which you're connected. Here I've connected Google Sheets. If you connect Notion, it'll show up here. Executions is all the workflows you've executed together. But if you go to a particular workflow, there is also a execution tab. But this will be only native to that workflow. And for the people who have the latest and written, there's something called data tables, which we'll take care of later. Now let's look at the left-hand side. That is home, that is personal, and there is something called templates here, if you see. And if you open it up, you can see the official Anytel templates. There are a lot of templates which you can choose and you know, you don't even have to make your own template. You will come and choose your template here, but that's not our goal. And this is uh, variables. You can't actually use this. If you only have an Anytel cloud, you can use this. So we can skip it right away. This is also an Anytel paid feature, but you, we don't need it actually. And this bell icon right here is when we have any updates to Anytel. Mine is the latest version, so there is no updates. Now let's go inside a demo canvas. So when you click on this button, you can see there are a lot of nodes here, but all of these nodes are triggers. So every time in your workflow, your first node will be a trigger. That is how you start your workflow. You get it started manually, that is by clicking, you can start it. But we don't want to start a manual workflow here. So I'm going to delete that. On app event, any connected app like Telegram, if it sends a message, that can trigger. I'll discuss more on this trigger later. Now on a schedule, it's what it says. We could run the workflow on a particular time or whenever you require, even repeatedly. It depends on you. On a webhook call is when an external application or a website gives you permission to run workflow. For example, if we click submit in a website, then our workflow runs. So that's a webhook call. We'll take care of this later too. This is on form submission. That is what we're going to do today. So if you want to add a trigger, you can just click here and there are others. For now, I have only discussed the very important notes and the ones we'll be using. Slowly, I unravel all of them. But now let's directly get into the workflows. It's really important to make a rough draft before making a workflow. So I'll tell you the summary of the workflow. It's nothing but we'll be giving a submission form to people and we'll ask them to fill that out and we'll classify those people based on their income. If they have more than 10k dollars as income per month, then we'll add them to the sheet. If their income is below 10k, then we'll not add them to the sheet. In both of these events, we are going to show them that their form submission has been successful because we don't have to tell them that we have actually classified them. We had already added an on-form submission. If I open this up, I can name this title and the form description is optional you can you can put it in if you want collecting info from people when you're working with big workflows this will help now add form element is where we are adding our questions in field name we can ask them the name next phone number email then income so last is income we want this to be a drop down so i'll choose drop down from here and the option one is about 10k per month the other option is below 10k per month of course if i press execute now a pop-up comes back and i'm submitting information now I cl when i click submit our form has been submitted when i close here you can see there's an output here. Now I'll give you a pro tip. In the future, we can test rest of our nodes using this output itself. If you don't pin your data, this is called pinning your data. Every time when you execute a workflow, you'll have to keep filling the form again. So this is really important. If you are in production mode, you'll have to test something. This will be really important. Now as we have pinned our data, let's move forward. Let's add a logic flow. So this flow is what logic flow is. And if you click this, there is a lot of logic flows. If you have to loop something, you can use loop over items. If you have to merge two data, there is merge item. Filter something, there is filter. Then if, if it's what you want to use today, there are a lot more that is like compare data sets and all. We'll use if today. This, is, this can be fixed or this can be expression. So I'll drag this and put income here. So I, if the income is about 10k per month, that is exactly the option. You can also change this to an expression. And when do we use expression is when we have to add some variable like now. Now is the time, the date and time right now. If you wanted to add plus, the time now plus 7 hours. So there are a lot of things which you can do in Anytel, but right now we'll just focus on this basic automation. So about 10k per month. And what I'll do is execute. There's a true branch and a false branch. Now in true branch, we can see our whole items have come into true branch. Because why? Now in the if router, if our condition matches, it goes into the true branch. If our condition doesn't match, it will go into the false branch. Now, our condition matches as uh, the income is about 10k per month. So it has to go into the true branch. One item is the number of items that's passed. And in true also, there is one item passed. Now, if you remember the workflow, we have to add to the Google Sheets. You can directly type sheets here. And what we have to do here is we have to add our update row in a sheet. We can also just, you know, use FN row. That is, it will just put in the row. 
uh, that's what's happening here. So we'll just use app and row. Now from here, you'll have to choose the sheet which you have already made. So in my drive, I already made a sheet called sample. For people who are confused right now, for people who just added and there is nothing here, don't worry. You can click on the above link and understand how to connect a Google app into your account. So you should do that first, then you should do this step. Uh, so after that, in that sheet, uh, so as you can see here, sheet one is what I'm using. You can either map each column manually or map automatically. There are two options. Now it's showing no columns because the step is not executed. If you click execute step, it will map each columns right here. Now each column has been mapped. You can either remove the columns you don't want. Uh, here, as you can see, when we ran our workflow, the data has been recorded here. But if you don't want this form mode or submitted ad, we don't need the time and the form mode. But if you want to add them back, you can go to this option and add them back. I can execute this step again. So when you remove these two, what you have to do is you have to map them manually now under name i'm adding name under phone i'm adding phone under email i'm adding email and under income i'm adding income now i execute this step and when i come back see only these three i've been added you can just delete this if you want if you don't need it so that's how you add to the sheets and the rest too is very easy now the only two notes i left is success message so you just have to add a form note and that's something called form ending choose that you can also redirect it to URL. If you have your own web page, you have a thank you page, you can redirect it to it. That is it. And uh, let's execute this once again. Now, I'll use the same form here. I just copy and pasted it and I'll add here. So I think our workflow is completed. I'll just unpin this data as it's time to execute the workflow. The very important part is keep saving it. If an intern doesn't have auto save, something very bad has happened to me. I don't want it to happen with you. So keep saving our workflow. I just put some gibberish and below 10k per month so now when i submit as you can see there is nothing recorded here but let's execute it again this time it's about 10k and i'm submitting it we can see it will get recorded you could check all the execution in the execution tab you could check what went wrong why it went wrong all of this will help you when you're working with a client so that was the first day today we understood the interface we understood the tools we made a very simple automation probably a first automation so in the day two we'll be taking it up a notch if you have extra time try to play around try to use more tools inside anything itself test it out by yourself and uh, i'll see you in the next video